hey, Greg, don't bother. I wouldn't put the last row in. Yeah, now that we have it all down and I think we did a pretty good job, let's actually pull it back up and redo it, yeah. like, for real. Okay. We don't like to, you know how it is. Right, yeah. Yeah, we don't really like to practice. Mm. Yeah, that's right. This is the first time laying this product down and we don't want to leave it for our client. We want to make sure that as we pull it all back up and lay it back down the second time, that we can, you know, apply all those things that we learned laying it the first time to make it as good as possible. So let's go ahead and tear it up. If only went down this quick. I mean, it kind of goes down this quick. So yeah, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't kidding. I mean, we're gonna pull this whole thing up and see if there's anything we can improve upon as we pull it up to redo the second time. So all the talk about, you know, practice and, you know, you wanting to try, try out your work before you like leave it for your customer. And we pulled this all up so they could redo it to make it perfect. That was actually a lie. I was just messing around and it was my way of coping with my depression. And that's because we noticed a spot on the floor that the joints did not come back together perfectly. And I don't know how that happened. I genuinely don't because this product, in order for it to lay flat, it has to be engaged. And this one was like half engaged, half not engaged, and it was flat. So I don't know what happened, but it was on my shoulders because it was a section of the floor that I laid uh, previously. So we pulled it all up. It took us less than 20 minutes. We got it all laid out in the rows that it was in. So it should be pretty fairly simple. We're gonna go put it back down now. So that stinks, but it happens. Good help is he's pretty unreliable, isn't he? What are you doing? Oh, do you think he felt something? I thought it was a bubble. Right, right here, what's this? What? Where? That feels like something's underneath this, dude. No, 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 no. Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing we found it now. We got one more? Yeah, this is where it's at. Can you see it from there? Yeah, right here. That's it. What is it? No. Take a look at this. This little piece of wood was sitting underneath the floor. And we would have never probably noticed as we were taking, putting the floor back on and we were on the ground, Greg felt it right over here. And luckily we were only about seven rows out. So we just went ahead and took those seven rows off because we could feel something and found this little piece of wood. Now that's probably the one downside to not using a pad because the pad will take out some inconsistencies and obviously make it quieter. Uh, this product doesn't require a pad. We're not above a concrete floor. Uh, we've got a nice wood floor, so we didn't need the pad, but that's something to consider. If you leave behind a little tiny debris and you're using a good quality pad, you might never notice it, but this would have wore through over time and been more noticeable over time and couldn't have that. So it's a good thing we tore it up. And uh, now, hopefully, we'll do even better than the first time. Think it's your thing up there? One second. Let me see if I can get my flinger. 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 Okay. And get it somewhere in the middle. Yeah, yeah. And just there you go. Man, I tell you what, it's not as glorifying to do something like lay a big floor like this the second time, but I feel good because the issue we had over here where the pieces were actually separating from each other. Not sure how it happened, 
but it happened. And then as we got back there, we found a spot where we left a little chunk of wood under there. We were able to take care of that. Now, now it's done for the second time. <sighs> and hopefully the last time. <laughs> so now we can go ahead and, yeah, now we can get all these bottom pieces in and uh, start doing some base trim. We're getting super close to finishing up this job, which means we're at the stage where we're gonna be installing trim. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is be working on the window and door trim package. And what that is, is I've gotta build a jam extension because I've gotta build out from the window out to the face of the finished wall. And then once I've done that by making a box, I'll install the casing. Now you can do this two ways. You can build all the pieces individually install them in the window, or you can do what I do, which is I always try to build them as a entire unit and then install it as one. So what that does is it allows me to uh, make sure that everything is nice and tight, fits perfectly, and uh, it's just a lot easier to control the miters and keep everything perfectly square. So I'm gonna go ahead and check. Well, first thing I did, I wanna say is I went ahead and I cleaned out around the perimeter of the window and then I did a spray foam insulation around the entire perimeter. So I've got about a four inch thick window and I filled that cavity up with spray foam, making sure that it didn't ooze out past the face. If it does, I know it did in a couple spots. I just go ahead and take my knife and I clean that out. But now what I'll do is I'll check the dimension of my jam. I go off of all four corners and this corner up here is six and a quarter, but the rest of them are six and five sixteenths. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut all of these pieces at six and five sixteenths. But I'm not just gonna cut this window, I'm gonna go ahead and check all the windows, get all of my jam extension depths, and make sure that they're all gonna be that six and five sixteenths, because if we did our job, you know, good, then I should see that they're all gonna be at six and five sixteenths, there might be some six and a quarters or some six and three eighths. And basically what you do there is you, uh, you fudge it a little bit, whether it's the casing is gonna stick out from the wall and you just flex it that, you know, slight 16th of an inch, which honestly you're never gonna see because that piece of casing can just do a little tilt and be tight to the wall. So you'll see as I go, I'll probably encounter, I'll probably encounter that more often than not um, because wood is never perfect and you got to remember we're dealing with posts and uh, the thickness of lumber through a lot of different pieces. We've got our, our jam extension on the window frame, which is a, a two by six that remember we ripped down so that it would be the same dimension as all of our columns. Then we've got a two by four. We've got a one by that runs vertical for our one by that runs horizontal on our finishes. So there's a lot of different materials that there could be tiny discrepancies in, and then that can change the depth of the jam uh, from being perfect, I guess, but it'll be all right. So we're gonna go ahead and make all those jam extensions. So there's all my tops and bottoms for seven different windows. I always try to do as much assembly line type work as possible. Come on, Kyle. All nice and consistently the same. So now this is where I try to get efficient because these boards that I'm cutting out of are just over eight foot long. And I know I gotta cut both ends off to clean them up. I need a bunch of 30 inches, 39 inches, 29 inches, 40 inches. I'm gonna try to utilize it so that I can cut out the least amount of waste. Uh, I always try to conserve it and maybe I'll save a board in case I mess up by cutting all my 46ers out of one board. That way I had very little waste, basically this. And now that I'm gonna be cutting 33s, 39s, 29s, I can hopefully get three of those boards in one board where I thought I was only gonna get two of them.
right, now the important thing, where is my piece of paper? Aha. All right, I need to make sure I build these windows the correct way. What I mean by that is one of these dimensions is the size of the window, and the other dimension is the size of the window minus three quarters on each side, so minus inch and a half. And that is so when I build my window box, my dimension is gonna be reduced by three quarters on each side for the thickness of this material. So I gotta make sure that I do it in the right order. I'm just gonna go ahead and start uh, putting these together. Got some tight bond, quick and thick. And then we're gonna go ahead and use these GRK cabinet screws. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with two screws, and then I'm also gonna hit some, uh, some nails through it. I always just visually inspect the boards to try to determine what side looks the best knot-wise. You know, the one with the least amount of knots. I'm always gonna choose that one. You know, something that a lot of people don't know is that, yes, I've, I've done a lot of post frame work, but before I was a post framer, I actually did residential carpentry. I built new homes, did kitchens, baths, uh, really the whole, the whole nine yards, and then I fell in love with post frames. So just a little side note, doing trim work and stuff is really not nothing new for me. I just haven't done it in a large scale for a while. Easy peasy. There's that size done. So these are the screws that I'm using. These are cabinet screws, GRK. And what's amazing about these things, man, is no pre-drill. They just go right in, no worry about splitting on your material. And this head is really nice because it really does a good job of grabbing into your material and sucking it and drawing it nice and tight. And I know it's doing its job because it squirts out uh, the glue, which tells me I'm getting a good compression. Uh, that's gonna also aid in getting a good uh, glue connection and a nice strong connection. So never ever disappointed with GRKs. So as I'm starting to put these together, what I was doing was screwing a uh, top and bottom screw on these connections and then coming back in with some nails for some added strength. But actually what I'm finding is if I pop a couple nails right where I want it, this 18 gauge brad nailer does a really good job. Uh, it's nice and fast, and it does such a good job so quickly that it doesn't move the material. Sometimes when you're putting a screw in, as you leave one piece and go into the next piece, remember we're going through like, we're going through the grain and then we're hitting the end grain on the side piece, it can move it just a little bit. So what I'm finding is if I pop, if I pop two nails in real quickly, top and bottom, I can then come back in with a screw, top, bottom, like I was, and it doesn't move it. It keeps it in its place. And it's just a little tip for you. Now, I don't know where I was introduced to pre-building your boxes, but I used to build these on site in a way that I would cut my tops, my bottom, and then my sides, and I'd go into the window opening and I'd put the top on, I'd set the bottom down, and then I'd slide my two sides in and that would hold everything you know, where I wanted. The problem was it was a real pain to get all of your reveals looking perfect and keeping everything, you know, I guess true to each other and nice and square so that a board wasn't kind of cocked. And you might be saying, yeah, but how are you gonna put this in the box and get it all perfect? I'll show you, it's a little trick I learned from another person on social media, uh, Andy Moore, he's from uh, Modern Oak. And when I seen him do it, it just blew me away and I've been doing this this way ever since. It's so simple. So stay tuned if you want to see how I set these boxes in the windows pre-built and get them lined up perfectly uh, so that the reveals are, are exactly where we want them.
So while Greg is starting on the base trim and uh, I've got all those window boxes already pre-made, I've still got to do my casing, but I figured I might as well go ahead and get my walk doors um, started to get trimmed out. That way, if Greg is doing that base trim, he has something to die into down at the bottom. Um, the biggest thing that I had to do is go around, prep my door for the trim by cutting back any overfill for that spray foam um, around the perimeter. And then also just double checking that I like the reveals. I like um, everything about the door. I can go ahead and make my window or my doors just like my windows where I build them as a unit and then install them. But I can check just to make sure that the depth of my extension is where I want it. So I'm, I would always rather have it just barely proud of the opening than uh, too small. So that's, that's the biggest thing I want to check. It should be fairly consistent. And if we aren't, I guess I'm the only one I can blame. Or I could blame Greg, I suppose. I'll probably build the casing and everything right as one unit and then me and Greg will just put it in. I know there's a bow in this. I put it purposely this way because I knew there was a bow in it. Yeah, you don't have to go crazy. I'm just going to check and make sure the size is good, which Oh, I'm hitting uh, the shim, which is fine. I can see. Nice, dude. Mm hmm Well, it's definitely nice to get the first door trimmed out, and now we can run base into it. But more importantly, we can just get a good feel for what these doors and windows are going to look like. That's the first one. And yeah, I mean, it's more wood, but... The question was whether or not we mitered these joints or we ran like a, I think it'd be more like a craftsman style where we just kind of overlapped. But because this trim board has a rounded edge and there's a uh, chamfer out of the back in order to help, I think, uh, you know, the trims lie nice around the jams if there's a little bit of inconsistency between your extension and your wall. So that would have been visible on the end and we just decided the miter it's clean, it's gonna look good. So that's what we went with. All right, so I've got four of these boxes here that I've got to put casing on and all I need is the dimension of the inside box, which is 44 and a half by 33 and a half. And I'm gonna add half inch to that dimension and have 45 and 34. And the reason I add a half inch is because I want a quarter inch reveal. So. The interior dimension plus a quarter on both sides will give me a nice quarter inch reveal around the casing and the proper dimensions. Definitely got to put the hearing protection in. Isotunes, I've never had a problem. I've often said good things about them and if you're interested in some, uh, some hearing protection for you on your job site or just around the house, maybe mowing the lawn, I'll drop a code that I have down below in the description and you can save $10 on a pair of uh, noise canceling Bluetooth headphones. Uh, you can take your phone calls, listen to music, and get hearing protection. So, pretty cool. This is a little tip, a little trick. So, if you know the width of your casing, which is pretty easy, you just measure it. This is two and three quarters. What you can do is remember that dimension of 45 inches, that's the inside plus a quarter. Well, that is measuring from this point down to the point where it's going to 45 up. It's kind of a hard thing to measure because you don't have anything to hook your tape measure on. So what you can do is if you're doing a perfect 45 like I am, you can actually double the width of your material. So two and three quarters times two is five and a half. And I can add five and a half to that 45 inches, which is gonna get me 50 and a half inches. And now I can hook my point. And actually I'm going to flip this over. And that is so I don't have to change my miter saw. I'm gonna hook the point and I'm gonna go 50 and a half. Now that is my long point to the miter.
Now the reason that works is because 45 degree angle is also a 90 degree triangle. And any 90 degree triangle, the two sides that are opposite, the I do believe this is the hypotenuse, should be equal to each other, which means if this dimension is two and three quarters, this is two and three quarters. So if I want 45, or sorry, 44 inches from this point to this point, all I gotta do is add two of these dimensions, which is a total of five and a half inches. So you remember geometry, I do believe it was. Um, you didn't wanna learn about it in school, but it's actually quite handy uh, when you're building stuff. All right, I'm not really sure why I wasn't doing this before, but having a lot of repetitive cuts, so I've got 12 of these miter cuts. I, I should be using my stop on my cut hub. That way I can not have to worry about pulling my tape out. So I'm actually gonna do that for the last six of these guys. And what I'll do is I'll pre-cut all this side. That way when I flip them over, I can bump it into the stop and get a perfect cut every time. All right, so now we've got all of our, well, not all of them, but the first set of all these small windows, uh, we've got all the pieces cut. Um, we gotta join them. So I'm gonna pre-assemble them here on this table. Then I will assemble them to the actual uh, jam extension box that I've already made. And then I will take that whole unit and install it in the window. And what that does is it allows me to precisely line up all the miters uh, to the best of my ability, get them fastened, get some glue, some Craig jig screws, that's what we're gonna do. And just do the best I can to get them as tight as possible. And when they're installed on the jam box, it helps hold them together and instead of having to fumble with them up on the wall, get everything to line up, I can just pop that whole unit in as one and know that it's uh, gonna be as good as possible. So the way that a Craig jig works, and uh, hopefully you can see this here, we've got these two pocket hole screws and they call them pocket hole because they kind of sit in on an angle and it's like a little pocket for the screw to go in. And what it does is it allows you to put a screw at a, an angle uh, strong enough to hold these two pieces together. I actually just was doing a demo for my client to show them how the miter was gonna look on the casing. So I put this together and put two pocket hole screws and it's a really nice strong joint, especially once that glue sets up. That, light, that nice long miter gives a lot of space for the glue to uh, make that connection between the two woods. And honestly, I think that the glue will end up being stronger than the fastener themselves. Uh, the glue I'm using is some uh, tight bond, um, 4,000 PSI, I think it's like Ultra, tight bond Ultra 3. The good thing is with us doing screws, that gives us our clamping power at the joint. So as soon as we put those pocket hole screws in, uh, it's gonna have its best chance of staying together forever, which is obviously my big concern being we're in this building where there's not gonna be air conditioning they will probably be doing a dehumidifier, keeping the moisture out of here and keeping it at some consistent level of uh, moisture. But just, just because I know the wood's gonna move around, this is my best chance. So time to start Craig jigging. The nice thing is the Craig jig sets you up to all the proper dimensions. So depending on the type of material you're using, the length of fastener you're using, it's got little jigs on the Craig jig that tell you where to put all the settings so that way you do the optimal hole. So also what I'm doing, you'll see I've got three different holes that I can use. And if I put my uh, piece of wood here on the jig and go till the face of this just covers up this hole. It maximizes the distance apart, both towards this side and as far over to this side of the miter as possible, which is I'm trying to get as much connection as possible 
um, without obviously being visible. And I'll show you what I mean. So when I flip this over, if I go any further out towards the tip of the miter, I'm gonna be chewing into the, the visual spot of this trim. And if I get too close here, I'm actually gonna be going into uh, the other piece and you might crack out this little corner right here. So I found that if I visually slide this over till it just barely covers that, this uh, middle hole, and then it gives me the proper placement. Now, another thing I could do here is a biscuit joint, but honestly, I just don't have a biscuit joiner, so maybe I'll put that on my Christmas list. And yes, this video is happening before Christmas. You probably won't see it till after Christmas. Look at this, Greg. Look at this. I can't make this stuff up. Three sides are done, and look at this. That is on a good miter saw. That's not me. And what I did this time was I used the, uh, the jig so that all of them were, I didn't have to measure. Once I cut one, all of them were cut the same. I cut the next one, all of them the same, which is gonna ensure right. four equal sides, 90 so degrees. That's right. It's not just about, you know, cutting it. You gotta have perfect miters, you gotta have perfect bevels, you gotta have perfect dimensions. I going perfect around quite a bit. I did, I shouldn't do that. All right, so this should be most of them. But bro, so. just, just come over here though and appreciate. That's pretty clean. I just want to be. I mean, I mean, for the wish you would have used some. We would have matched the grain a little bit better. What, like with the same exact piece? Yeah, dude. It just doesn't doesn't look right with off grain like that. <laughs> well, you can't match grain around a forty-five. That that is some of the cleanest miters I've done, and I ain't gonna lie. Now we've got all of our casings put together and our jam extensions built. We can go ahead and put them together. So I'm gonna use my Martinez Micro because it's got this quarter inch bump out on the end and it's perfect for marking the quarter inch reveal that I always do on window and door trims. It's super handy. I'm not sure if that's what it was intended for, um, but that's what I use it for. Nice finger running right along the edge of your bottle and your uh, wood makes that pretty, pretty darn sweet. And then I'm gonna take my casing frame that I put together and I'm gonna line it up with those marks that I just used my Martinez Micro for to make. Get it close. The box might not be perfect at this point. Actually, it's pretty close. We're gonna just tack the corners. I'm going to use that quarter inch little nubby just to make sure that I'm right where I want to be. And we'll just work our way around now that it's pretty much, it's pretty much where it's going to go. This is why I love doing um, window boxes. You get to really take your time, make sure that everything 
is right where you like it as you fasten it and you can do it in a comfortable position versus up on the wall or inside the window while you're you know doing it you're, you're doing it all right here in a nice spot and that's it that is a window box and now probably not today i'm gonna let these set up and tomorrow i'll show you how i put them together